So the question was, once you build an application in Go, how do you uh, deploy it out to the web? And you have uh, two options. So the first option is App Engine Super Easy. And you just deploy it to App Engine. And then you can point a domain towards it. And then the second option is you can host it anywhere you want. And then you have to do all the DNS configuration yourself, which are like A records, C, rec C name records. And uh, I don't even quite know that process. I've never done it. Caleb does go over it. So that's day 10, video 3, video 3 or video 4. Right? He goes, he goes through that. Um, so, for instance, you know, we left off with ROT13. And uh, here's a static file server. This is all the Go code for a static file server. So if you don't need a dynamic website, that's all you need right there. And then if I run this, And uh, go to localhost. All right, this is a uh, takes a second to fire up. Maybe it's nine thousand. What did I say on here? Nine thousand. Static. That's serving everything. All right. And then if I want to deploy that, I do the app engine deploy, which we'll see in a second. But then I go into Google Domains. I didn't show this in this class. And, uh, and so you buy a domain at Google, and then you just go in and configure the DNS, and you just point it towards your App Engine project ID, and it does the rest for you. So you get a project ID when you do App Engine. And you can see the project IDs under Developer Console, Google Developer Console. So they're the project IDs. Summer boot camp was uh, fresh rain 87823. So you saw that right here inside Google Domains, fresh rain. Just saying, hey, anything that comes in those two places, go there. If you wanted to do it yourself, um, I have some presentations on that. And again, like I said, you know, you can look at the video descriptions here, and it's going to be like day 10. Um, creating, just looking, memcache, I think it's right, maybe it's right in this first one here he talks about, but it's one of these videos, but anyhow, uh, what he does is he goes through, and, um, custom domains so you could also go into Google Developer Console and once you open it up which is what this looks like so I'm in here and I say hey, I want to look at web Pro programming summer boot camp you can see I'm now in web programming summer boot camp and this gives me all the options for app engine and you can come in here and you could look at compute, app engine, you could look at your quota details, um, you could look at settings. I don't know, so a lot of, a lot of stuff in here. And then you could also uh, look at, uh, well, the settings is where you do it, so let's, let's just look at that. I'm like scrolling all over the place. Where did it go? Right here. Settings and uh, custom domains and then uh, right here you can see summer web boot camp and so it did all that for me when I was over at Google domains and it, it set all of the A records and C records and so www.summerwebbootcamp.com is a C name and it, uh, I'm not sure what exactly that means googlehosted.com so maybe Google resolves that and then summerwebbootcamp.com are A records which point to IP addresses. So C names is a domain to another domain. It's a pointer from one domain to another domain. And an A record is a pointer from a domain to an IP address. 
So I guess you know what this is saying is the www is not part of the domain. The part of the domain is the, the name and then the TLD, the top level domain, the .com. Right? And so if I want www Summer Web Bootcamp, that's going to point back basically to Summer Web Bootcamp. It's somehow doing that through Google. And uh, if I wanted like, you know, uh, I don't know, email or practice, right, or, you know, um, attendee.summerbootcamp.com, I'd create that and then I'd point it back to here and then handle that, right, so people could go to attendee.summerwebbootcamp.com, so that'd be another C record. So you set them that way, and uh, we watched Caleb do his own, right, not doing the, the Google domains route, and so here's Caleb's for Twitter mock, and he added a custom domain, so clicked add custom domain, and then he said, you know, okay, I want the domain to be uh, bootcamp-example, dot doxy.net so he's adding a prefix to his domain his domain is doxy.net and he had to verify that right so the first thing he did was verify that domain so it says you know like prove this is your domain go put this code on your home page or something and then it checks okay you're able to do that you must own that domain so he's adding this prefix route path whatever to it so that's going to be a what an a record or a c record based upon what c name record just based upon what you just learned C name, right? So it's going from a domain to a domain. Canonical is what C stands for. And uh, and then he had to come over to, like, you know, whatever, his registrar, where his domain is managed, the domain. And he had to change the, the A record and the C record stuff manually. You could do this at Google Domains, too. He happens to use Cloudflare. And so he went in and uh, said, hey, this is going to be a C name. And uh, I'm bootcamp example is an alias of, and you can see he put in the same thing here, GS, and that's just like, I guess, the, you know, server domain or whatever that, you know, handles uh, routing towards things that are deployed to App Engine, because he wasn't using Google domains, but he was deploying to App Engine, so, you know, that will find, uh, find it on App Engine. I guess, it seems like you don't have to add a project ID. I wonder if he does that somewhere. Um, like, how did it know go from here to his project ID? I don't know. So maybe because right here, that's where he said it, right? He did it in developer's console for hello world, right? And he said, this is going, I'm adding this. So this is how the canonical name is right here. The alias is bootcamp. This is a C name. So you need it. These are the directions. Create a resource record for doxy.net domain using values as shown. C name, alias bootcamp canonical that and so right here when he did this somewhere at googlehosted.com they made a record that when somebody goes to here it's going to this project set select the domain you want to point to a stew curve right that's where that setting got made and so he just came over here and he said okay here's you know bootcamp dash example this is all for doxy.net and we're pointing it towards that domain and so when that comes in right somebody comes in with that request it serves back that project. So same thing, not too bad. And then when you, you run it, bootcamp-example-doxy.net, right, it serves that App Engine project. So that's, a, that's running on App Engine. If you wanted to deploy it to just your own without App Engine, if you wanted to deploy it just to your own, you know, like get a virtual machine, install Ubuntu on it, uh, you, ha you, you have everything you need to do that, right? Like it just compiles down to binary. It's got your server side programming and your and your server all built together. And then you just run that. But you have to configure, you know, some things which again I've never done. But Caleb went through it. And uh, you can look through this list of videos for, you know, I'm just gonna search for Ubuntu and see if something comes up. Nothing. Let me search for Linux. Nothing. And uh, what else might uh, he have mentioned that I would have made a note of when I was watching the video? Um, maybe virtual, virtual machine. So uh, here we go. So day nine, part five. Uh, uh, videos, main, main, listen and serve, main, listen and serve a real server. That's not really making sense. Set port 80. So yeah, so you have to. So how do you put this onto? Uh, 
how do you put this on to, you know, uh, so main and, maybe that's what I meant to type, main and listen and serve are, are a real server, right? And set port 80. So instead, we've been doing localhost 8080 or localhost 9000. Set port 80. And, uh, and you know, you need to run main as sudo, and then you need to bind to a port 80 and then 443 for HTTPS and DigitalOcean virtual machine. Log into DigitalOcean using SSH. And then something about Docker and, I don't know. Go is great because it's just binary that you need to deploy. There are no dependencies like in Ruby. You don't need to install anything on the server. Go build for different platforms. So, so you know, the, the, he, he walks through it briefly there. So you could go check that out if you really kind of want to see how do you do it. Any more here? Just A name, C name records. It's quota, so initially it's free, and when you get too much traffic, it costs you money. All right. Well, I think that's a good little standalone.